Ugh, MK, so I sent my book out to beta readers and asked them for help on the story, and all I got back were grammatical corrections, which is great, but it doesn't help me with the story. What do I do? Okay, so this is a real situation. I've actually heard from a lot of different authors, so today I'm going to be talking to you about how you can make the most out of the beta readers for your book. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm MK Williams. I'm an author and independent publisher. I love to share my insights all about self-publishing with you. Before I get started into today's video, don't forget to hit subscribe below. That way you'll be here every week as I release new videos on self-publishing, making a career out of being an author, and now being a mompreneur. So when it comes to beta readers, these are the people who are going to be looking at your book as a first take, right? This isn't your ARC readers when the book is done and you're looking for reviews. These are people who are reading it before the manuscript is finalized. And ideally, you want these are the readers who are going to be going through and helping you with the structure of the book, right? Does it make sense how I have things lined up here? Um, does this transition make sense? Are you following where I'm going? Things of that nature. So what I hear from a lot of authors, though, is that they send out their book with that expectation and that explanation to their beta readers, but what they get back is just typo corrections or grammatical corrections. And they're very grateful for those comments, but they're like, I still don't know if my book makes sense. Like, do you understand what I need you to understand? And so today I'm going to be going over the ways to maximize your beta readers for your book. So I specifically talk about beta readers in self-publishing for the first time author. And I also talk about them a little bit in how to write your first novel, because this book really picks up once your first manuscript is done, that first draft. So between finishing writing the novel and then getting to self-publishing, um, there's definitely some overlap where the beta readers are coming in. So one of the things I want you to do is make sure that when you're choosing your beta readers, so before you even send it to them, you need to choose these beta readers. Um, you need to consider a few things. So it should be someone who likes to read and preferably likes to read your genre. You don't want to be sending out for beta readers to somebody who doesn't like to read or somebody's like, well, I always prefer like cozy romances and you're sending them your book on how to update your taxes. Like uh, that's, that's not what they're into. They're not going to like it. Um, and maybe that is your ideal reader, right? Somebody who's totally outside that realm, but you really want to make sure they're going to at least Set yourself up for a positive <laughs> feedback with somebody who's actually would be likely to buy a book like yours. Um, don't go after somebody who's totally off the wall, never going to pick up your book, even if they're your aunt, even if they're your mom, if they don't like that genre, they're not going to like it. Don't send that to them. You're, you're asking for trouble. The second is, um, and I see this a lot because I help some authors with nonfiction. So if you write a how-to book, you want to have a mix of beta readers. So first, you want someone who is an expert in your topic someone who is just learning your topic, right? They don't have any clues, so they would actually need your how-to book. Um, and then somebody who's kind of in the middle. They know a little bit just to be dangerous, but they don't know everything. And so what you want to do is you want to be able to understand these different levels, right? The expert is going to tell you, hey, you actually missed this and this, um, and I would explain this a little differently. The person who's the novice, who doesn't know anything, is going to say, oh, wow, okay, I understand how to do this, but I'm still confused here. That's what you want to know, right? And the person who's in the middle is going to say, oh, oh, you know, I would have thought of this differently. You're going to get those different levels of feedback. So if you are writing a how-to book or a nonfiction book that's kind of guiding somebody through a process, that's something you want to keep in mind. As much as it sounds scary, I want you to actually ask your opinionated friends to read this. Um, it's better to hear the critical feedback from a friend while you can still make edits than to hear it from a stranger on the internet once your book is out. The whole point is that somebody is going to be poking holes to tell you what needs fixed, right? The worst thing for you to do is to put the book out there and you get a one-star review that's like, none of this made sense. Um, you don't want that. You'd rather have a friend tell you kindly, hey, you know, I really didn't follow you here. Um, you know, I, I need help bridging from this concept to this concept or from this part of the story to this part of the story. Um, you definitely want them to be able to tell you that. Okay, the last thing I really want you to think about too is that these beta readers really need to understand what they're committing to. Two, it's better to get a handful of committed beta readers who can give really good feedback than a couple dozen people who don't even respond. I've heard from some authors who are like, oh, I heard I had to get 100 beta readers, so I sent it all out and I blasted it, and 100 people said they're definitely going to do it. I'm so excited. And inevitably, months later, they're like, I only got three people to write back. And I'm like, that sounds about right. Yep, because a lot of people are really excited to help you, but they have their own lives. They have everything that they're doing, and they've agreed out of the kindness of their hearts to read your book and give you critical feedback 
And that takes time, that takes mental effort. So you definitely want to make sure that you get some really positive res- like responses, enthusiastic, like, yes, I can't wait to read your book. I'm super excited. I'm committed to get it to you by this day. Um, and they're going to send it. Um, and I would just take a grain of salt with anybody who sounds too excited. If they don't, you don't hear back from them, it's fine. Like, chances are a lot of the people are going to drop off. Um, that's why you want to have that wide base. But it's better just to find a few really good committed beta readers than a bunch who are kind of like, meh, maybe I'll do it, maybe I won't see you want to see you so some things that I've really found helpful is that when you do send that manuscript out to your beta readers you want to ask them to all send your feedback on a given date so that does two things so you know that that's your deadline and they know that that's the deadline so they can say hey I can't meet your deadline um, I'm going to family vacation I'm just not gonna have time or oh, I got a big project at work I can't make that deadline you already know they can't do it they know they can't do it boom don't have to worry about it the other reason for the deadline I mean people just work good with deadlines is that you then know that you're not going to touch your book until that date. Um, And then you can send reminders as that date comes up. Um, Now, while your manuscript is with your beta readers, you should not be making edits. And so say somebody gets through it right away, they get it back to you three weeks early. Do not, do not look at those edits and start making revisions to your manuscript until you get everybody's feedback. The reason why I don't need to do this is that that one person might have been totally an outlier. They might have said, everything's, you know, I don't understand anything and you need to rewrite the whole book. And you're just thinking, oh my gosh, meltdown. Okay, I need to rewrite everything. Let me start right now. And then all the other beta readers come back and say, I love this book. It's I want to change a thing. You did a great job. Okay, so now you've just rewritten your book because of one person's opinion when everybody else was saying something different. So what I want you to do is to aggregate this feedback. You want to look for trends and where people are saying something didn't make sense. You know, if one person says, oh, this doesn't make sense, okay, maybe that's just them. If all of your beta readers say this doesn't make sense, okay, that needs fixed. You need to you need to revise and rework something. So that's where you really want to make sure you are not going in prematurely before that deadline date and starting to fiddle with the manuscript. Wait till it all comes in. So what I also think you should be doing, in addition to the deadline, you need to send them a list of questions to consider elements to look out for. You know what your weaknesses are. You know in the back of your mind, you're like, uh, I'm not sure about this section. Now, there's some things that could totally come out of left field that you weren't expecting, and that's really good feedback for you to get to. But in general, you kind of know like, hey, does this flow well? Or like, did I segue between these two chapters well? Or was there anything unclear? Give them a list of three to five really specific questions and elements to look out for. That way, people will actually know to focus on that. Otherwise, do not be surprised when all you get back are typos, grammar, and spelling. A lot of people only think who are outside of the book world that editing is just that. It's just proofing and grammar. And it's a lot more than that at the beta reader stage. You're really looking for structure and content and and fluidity. So you really want to let them know and prepare them to say, can you follow what I'm saying? And could you take action on this item, whether that's turning the page to keep reading, you know, a fiction series or doing X, Y, Z that you're teaching them how to do in the book. So you'll probably need to send friendly reminders. Most people will be very happy to help. But again, their life is going to come up and get in the way. Um, You definitely want to give them a deadline, even if it's arbitrary, even if you're kind of like, well, I'm self-publishing and get done whenever. No, no, give them a deadline. Otherwise, they're going to send it to you two years after you publish the book. I'm, I'm not kidding. They're going to do it. Um, that just always happens. Um, so definitely make sure you set that deadline and follow up with thank yous. I do know some people who will get a small gift to their beta readers. They'll get them a you know Starbucks gift certificate, Amazon gift certificate as a thank you for their time. Um, you can do that or you can just say, hey, I'm going to put you in the acknowledgments of my book. I really appreciate you taking that time. You were part of this process. Um, so make sure to say thank you multiple times. Um, and obviously, these are going to be great people down the line to give those early reviews, um, to give feedback, to help you hype the book. Um, but you obviously want to show gratitude first because they took time out of their day when they could have been doing literally anything else and they chose to help you. So that's really big. So I hope that these tips have helped you as you're starting to think of getting your book out to beta readers. What has your experience been with beta readers? Do you use them? Do you not? Have you had any of these hiccups occur to you? Was there something I didn't cover? Definitely let me know and we'll keep the conversation going in the comments. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe. That lets YouTube know that you're getting value from the information I'm putting out and can get this video in front of other authors like us. Now you can get back to writing your book. 
Hey, if you want to continue to support this channel and my other creative work, please head over to buymeacoffee.com and support my channel. You can buy me one coffee, three, five, ten, or you can even get a membership. Those who are in the membership are actually going to be included in the acknowledgments pages of all of my published books moving forward as a big thank you. And you can even get some additional options to get an Instagram thank you post shout out or a shout out in an upcoming video. Thank you so much for supporting this channel.